In this video, we'll look at setting up a simple bellows rig. I've set up a box that has subdivisions two in the long direction and three in the vertical direction. I'm going to use this as a, a basis for building up a faceted surface that could be used in a bellows. This will represent one half of the width of the bay and one half of the length of the bay. Um, and we'll basically build up one bay inside a bellows system and then multiply that bay once we have it produced. So I'll go ahead and reduce this box into an edible poly and once I've done that I want to dispose of the polygons that I don't need and basically those would be um, all of the polygons that won't wrap around the edge. We'll go ahead and throw those out and so I have five polygons here left to work from. I'm going to go through here and split the individual polygons and triangulate them so that as I manipulate and adjust the surfaces I'll retain uh, planar objects. Um, the quadrilaterals are great for a surface but they're a little bit more difficult to work with in terms of this methodology so we're going to try to reduce these all into triangles. I'm going to go ahead and pause and come back after the triangulation is done. Okay, so I've split up the uh, first four polygons and let's look at the last one here. Inside the polygon topological level, I'll go ahead and select a polygon and then we'll use the quick slice tool. You'll note that my object snap has been turned on and it's set to vertex and by having that turned on then I can use the quick slice and snap from vertex to vertex on this polygon and if we go ahead and let go of that geometry, you should see now that a subdivision has been placed. Let's go ahead and turn off the quick slice. So now that I have this subdivided into a bunch of triangular um, faces, I'll use my vertex editing tool and we'll select um, the vertices that we'd like to push and pull initially and I'm going to grab um, uh, reciprocal alternating points here throughout the uh, the overall width of this and let's go ahead and pull those up into space. Let me turn my snap off first before we do that because if you leave the snap on there's a tendency for those points to be picked up and then snap down to some other geometry and um, there we go that's better and so you should see now we have dimension on that surface. I'm going to go through and push and pull some of the other vertices here so that I can give this an overall shape and form and then we'll come back so you should note now that the um, half or quarter profile of the the bay here has an overall truss-like quality to it. And so the triangulation of these facets uh, when combined with um, the mirror side of the bay should produce for us for something that's fairly stable in terms of supporting itself. Of course you could always confirm with your structural engineer exactly what this should be or run your own calculations if you prefer generally speaking for this particular exercise this is reasonably close and it's certainly something uh, that we could use to make a bellows and confirm or reject a uh, design approach. Next what I want to do is uh, go ahead and duplicate this particular item uh, so that we can produce a whole bay. I'll select and go to the mirror tool and we want to produce no we want to produce a copy not a clone we want to have that um, initially mirrored side by side so we can use the offset tool. So let's go ahead and make our copy by clicking OK and then we can use the, uh, you'll notice that I was a little bit loose about uh, where that went and because I wasn't exactly certain how far the offset was we could have established a precise bay and then made the uh, mirrored copy just that amount but I find it's uh, easy enough to use the move tool and of course we have the snap turned on and set to vertex we should be able to pick this thing up from this corner and drop it onto that. So what you'll see now is that uh, geometry is starting to produce um, a half bay here for our bellow structure. We'll go ahead and take those two now and mirror copies of them to make a complete bay. So I'll select both of them and we'll mirror a copy and in this case we're going to mirror in the Y direction and then we need to choose some sort of offset to get that geometry over to the opposite side of the structure and just like we used previously uh, we'll use the move and the snap set to vertex and I'll move these guys into place and we should now find that we have at least the surfaces to make one full bay. 
So all of these items will now need to be joined together. First item selected, if I'm in polygon level, we can move over to where it says edit geometry and you can see a button for attach and right next to that is a window. If we simply select attach, you can go around and click on items and have them added uh, to the geometry. They do not have to be contiguous to be added, um, they can be dispersed, but uh, for our purposes in the end we want these things to share vertices, have those vertices welded and have this behave as a cohesive bellows. With this first one selected, I'll go to attach, click on the window, you'll see all the items that are available to us for attaching. I'll select attach and now all four of these have been joined together. The only problem is, is their seams need to be welded still. So if we should push and pull on the polygons, uh, we'll actually pull apart. We'll take care of welding at the end after we produce uh, the five bays of this. So I'm going to back out one level. And um, before joining them all together, we might give one last bit of consideration to the profile. Is this something that's acceptable, acceptable to us? Do we uh, wish to manipulate the profile a little bit? We could grab some of the, um, the vertices here and move them around. Uh, that's, uh, that's up to the designer, okay? So next, let's back out and make five copies of this and I'm going to find that's probably easiest to handle in plan. We'll move with the shift down and I can also turn my snap on so I should be able to pick this up from this corner and drag it over to the opposite corner and we'll make four copies of that so that we can have a full five bays and you'll see now that uh, we have a five bay uh, folded plane uh, structure and uh, it's looking a little clunky to me, not terribly elegant, but um, I think it makes the point. You may also consider relieving this of alternating triangles here across the base so that uh, this actually becomes feet or legs on which this sits and maybe stretch the bays out a bit more. But I think in terms of overall process, um, this is adequate to get the point across. Going back to the our host or our original, like we did previously to add the other elements, into the one bay, we'll add all five bays together. So we'll go to attach and we'll find uh, the other items in here that are available to us for attaching. We'll go ahead and attach those. Now you see we have one overall uh, unit. The one last step here to make this behave as a unit is to go to the vertex level and select all of the points and we'll go down to here where it says edit vertices and you'll find the weld button and we go ahead and click on that and we should find that this thing is now all welded together. So should we happen to stretch or pull on it, it won't pull apart. Okay, so I've gone through here and manipulated the faceted surface uh, a little bit more, uh, eliminated some triangles across the bottom so that this could become uh, something that sits on legs. And what we're going to do next is go through here and assign various colors to the polygons, possibly turning some of the polygons here in the elevation into windows. And we'll do that with a multi-sub-object material. Like uh, what is shown in the morph file, I'm going to select all of the polygons inside my file here and we'll sign uh, material IDs to those polygons so that uh, when we have this material applied, uh, it'll automatically uh, go to the polygons that have the corresponding address. Um, so some of the polygons inside here, I do want uh, to have glass inside of them. So I think these uh, four diamond shapes, and that might be easier access from the elevation view. As long as I don't have ignore back facing turned on, it'll pick all the way through to the polygons beyond. I'll hold down the control and pick up all of these polygons. So I've got uh, four, eight, 12, 16 on this side, 16 on the reciprocal side, we see we can confirm from the other views that um, they are in fact selected. And we'll go ahead and give those the address of number two. And we should see instantly, tell that this is a different material. We can also see that it's transparent because I had set up that material two as glass. You can follow through by changing the color uh, of the various surface in any variety of ways. Okay, next what I wanna do is duplicate this and um, and then lattice it and then the duplicated lattice structure uh, will basically act as the the kind of rib structural support for this piece. Let's uh, get out of the surface uh, level, topological level and come back up to move 
and hold down shift and we will move a copy of this off to the side for now. Now make sure it's a copy. It is possible to rig this up uh, as an instance. Um, I certainly can show that some other time. Okay, so in the modifier stack for this copy, we're gonna pull down to where it says lattice. And once we find lattice, you'll see that it's gonna take the topological features and actually dimensionalize them, turn them into um, three-dimensional forms. So all of the edges of the polygons will become struts and all of the vertices that make up um, each of the polygons will become joints. And uh, we can set the radius or dimension of the joints and struts inside here. And we can also establish the number of sides so it can make it smoother um, or not so smooth. I would suggest for right now the default is more than adequate. Uh, you certainly don't want to get into lots of extra subdivisions because it'll come at great expense. Um, the material ID for this is number three based on my multi sub object material that was created. If you look at it, uh, the struts, I set those up to be number three. It has a bluish color and then I set up the joints to be this kind of orange primer color. So if we look at the joints, they can be based on a number of geometry types. So it's a geode that's uh, tetra, octa, or icosa, and you could also set up the uh, radius of that. And the material ID for this is gonna be number four. We can also ask for this to be smooth, and you can set up end caps for the struts. It's not entirely um, necessary for the end caps to be used in this particular piece, but at some point, we, if we would explode this, and want to go around and measure out and use those individual geometries, we may choose to have those end caps placed. I'm gonna use the align tool, which is found up above, and we're going to align the lattice with the skin. So because it's pre-picked, it's basically prompting me, what do you want to align this to? And I'll click on the skin, and I'm going to align this by its X, Y, and Z position. And it could be centers or pivot points or whatever. Since the two are siblings, they should align by their pivot points just fine. And I'll go ahead and click OK. And now we'll see that the two are joined, not joined, but um, aligned together. So next what we want to do is apply a modifier to both geometries. I'll we'll pre-pick both of these two. You'll see that it says two objects selected. We'll go to the modifier list and I'm going to pull down to where it says stretch. And that stretch will now apply to both of these. And if we zoom out just a little bit here, you'll see the stretching at first is, uh, you know, a little bit out of our control. And so what we want to do is align that in the proper axes. And it appears to me that this is going to want to go in the X axis in this particular example. So we're stretching in the right direction here, but there's lots of distortion. And um, while this isn't an accurate representation of the behavior of the parts, if they're real, uh, we might assume that this is made out of something that is a bit stretchable, you know, at least in terms of the, the skin. The struts might be fixed, but this is probably sufficient uh, to have a little bit of distortion for uh, an early design study. Now, the way to avoid a lot of the distortion is to put a wild number in the negative direction in Amplify. And you should find that uh, now when we stretch, um, we're not seeing so much distortion. Okay, so now we have a deployable bellow structure. And what's gonna make this interesting is how it's combined with a variety of other morphs and assemblies.